Hi everybody, Mike from the Digital Media Lab. Here today we're going to bring in some of the elements of our composite. This is video four in our video series. Let's get started. All right, so let's go back to our um, image uh, that we dropped out in the first video of Mars. And I want to grab my move tool because we want to move this object. So I'm going to grab, this is, this is how you drag one layer from one document into another. If we grab the layer itself, so I'm grabbing the layer itself, I'm going to drag it up to the tab until, it, uh, until that image becomes parent. And then I need to drag it into the document itself. So if I let go, there we go. It drags right where I put it. So you need to drag it to the tab once again. You need to drag it to the tab and then into the document itself. And you need to tell Photoshop where that image goes. I'll undo that because I don't need two moons. And then I'm going to drag. So we need our moon to drag beneath our cloud. So I'll drag it beneath our clouds like that. And it's looking a little bit too big. So let's, let's press Control zero so that I can kind of see my whole image. I'm going to press Control t to bring up my transform because we need to shrink this image down. Okay, so I'm going to grab one of my corners and I'm going to um, shrink it down a little bit. Now, whenever you're creating a composite image, there's a couple of things you need to think about. The first is um, <clears throat> the relationship between size. And sometimes size can be rather difficult to tell. Like exactly how big do we really need to make this moon? Now, because we're creating a an otherworldly place. I mean, this moon could be as big as you want, but uh, for the purposes of, you know, when you're creating your composites, you might want to think about this. This moon, I know probably isn't going to be bigger than, let's say, the mountain in the background. So I can use objects in the scene to kind of judge size. So I can use the mountain as a way to scale my moon down. All right, that's looking pretty good. However you guys want to do it. The other thing is, is that uh, in our background image, and I'll press, by the way, I'll press enter to commit my transform change. In our background image, so if I just kind of hide this image temporarily, I have a strong light source coming from here. So I want to think about where my light sources are and how they uh, illuminate the objects in my image. Now this moon has kind of the dark side over here and the illuminated side is on here. So I'm going to press control T to transform it again. And then I'm going to mouse to the corner and I'm going to rotate it around so that the dark side is facing away from my light source. Thereby kind of just making it look like there's sort of like a setting sun back here. We're just going to kind of play with that. I'll press enter once I'm happy with that. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we don't want this to look too much like Mars, so we're going to change its color. So I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking at the bottom of my layers panel and I'll create a hue saturation layer. And I need to, now if I start making a hue adjustment like I'm going to, you'll see that it'll change the background as well. So I need to clip this layer to the layer beneath it. And the way that I do that in the properties panel, I can click this little button right there. And we can see here that the hue saturation layer is now clipped to the layer beneath it. It will only change the color, in this case hue, in this case this hue saturation adjustment layer, will only affect the moon. All right, so let's kind of give our moon a nice green color. That's looking pretty good. Maybe bump up the saturation. That's looking pretty good as well. Now the moon is a little bit, um, let's see, um, I need to grab my moon and kind of move it around here. The moon is a little bit, um, it's a little bit too dark for the purposes of this image. So I need to kind of go in here and we also need to change the brightness and contrast of this. And you'll see here that when I have that layer selected, so when I had layer one, it created a new brightness contrast layer. And you can see here that it automatically clipped that layer to uh, my moon layer. If it's not clipped for any reason, then you can simply just click over here, click in the bottom of your properties panel, and it will clip that to um, that layer. And we're just going to bump the contrast down a little bit to help give it and maybe bump the brightness just a tiny bit to help make it look like it belongs with our scene just a tiny bit. But mostly this is just to kind of show you guys that you can clip multiple layers to a single layer and it will only affect the layer that it is clipped to. I'll go ahead and select my moon layer and drag it into position. Now to just kind of clean up my uh, layers panel, I'm going to shift click so that I have all three layers selected. And then I'm going to press the group icon at the bottom of my layers panel. And what that's going to do is just kind of group those together and keep things organized. I can go ahead and rename, I can double click the name and we're going to rename it moon. 
All right. All right, so we're going to continue our composite by going back to the flower that we dropped out in a previous video. And once again, I'm going to click the layer and we're going to drag it into the tab. And then I need to drag it into the location where I want it. In this case, I'm just going to kind of drag it up here. It's in the wrong layer order, so I need to drag it to the top of the layer. And there we go. And I'm just going to drag it down here. Now we have, we're going to create this into something that looks a little bit more alien so that size is not too terribly important. But we know our flowers really probably shouldn't be gigantic as the bush. So I'm going to press Control T to size it down and we will scale that down a little bit. So I'm using the size of one of these bushes and leaves to kind of judge how big that flower should be. You can adjust it to taste and we'll go ahead and just stick that on the rock somewhere and I'll press enter to commit that change. All right, very good. And the next object that we want to bring in is our camera. So once again, I'm gonna click my camera tab and we're gonna drag the layer itself into the tab and then into the document. Uh, this time it drug into the correct location, so I'm happy with that. I will press Control T to resize it. I'm also going to rotate it slightly because we're gonna let this sit on the rock. I know that my camera should probably be a bit smaller. We know that it's probably not going to be any bigger than these rocks. There's not really a perfect object in here. We're just kind of using some of the objects in our document and we're going to let it sit right there. Now we drug in all of our objects. We have our composite ready. Obviously it's not looking, um, we need to make some adjustments so that it's looking a little bit more otherworldly. We need to blend these objects together, which we'll do in the next video.